morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, everyone, back to the Second Palace. And we are at the interview room. And ladies and gentlemen, I have a special guest that has been here before. Uh, we're doing an update interview, by the way. And he is the host of not, uh, the Real Spiritual Talk Radio. So picture this. You had an NDE. Well, what are NDEs? NDE is near-death experience. And like the last time, I love hearing different videos about near-death experience. And I kind of still nervous about the life review part of the, uh, the whole experience part of it and all like that. But we'll explain more about that. But uh, I would like to welcome back a real, real citizen, and he has his mansion for life. Ladies and gentlemen, the real host of Real Spiritual Talk Radio, Mr. Lamont Gates. Welcome. Welcome back to the Big D Zone. Thank you very much, Deshaun. I absolutely love that introduction there. Great to be back. Uh, yeah. You know what we do here. You know what we do. You know how we do it. So, gosh, it's been... Quite a while since I have you here at the Second Palace, uh, here in this room. And so, what's been happening? What, what happened since we last appear, uh, been on the Big D Zone? Well, before we I even get into that information, I just want to once again thank you very much for letting me come on to the Big D Zone to talk a little bit about this, in my opinion, very very important topic, as it deals with highness, right? The the, the spiritual and uh, conscious awareness that's happening around us, uh, above us, and how it actually impacts our lives. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about what a near-death experience is. I know you touched on that in, in your introduction by explaining what the acronym means exactly. NDE is near-death experience. Uh, an NDE or near-death experience uh, typically and generally occurs when an individual is uh, clinically dead. And when we say clinically dead, we're referring to heartbeat stoppage, breathing stoppage, and or brainwave secession, which means there is no brainwave activity occurring. And while this is happening in this particular state of clinical death, to which one would think that no one has any awareness or consciousness of what's happening. Uh, quite the opposite, in a near-death experience, the person is experiencing heightened awareness. They are experiencing lucid consciousness to the point where even if they were to come back into their body and compare the consciousness, there would be no comparison because the near-death experience consciousness, apparently, according to many near-death experiencers, is extremely heightened. And in this state, they're typically outside of their physical body, outside of the world while uh, observing it at the same time. Some people talk about going into a tunnel that connects them to some other spiritual realm, uh, they go into some bright light, many describe. They come into contact with light beings, a massive light being that many refer to as God because it has a personality and it's all-knowing uh, of the individual and the, and the individual's life. They may see deceased relatives or friends. They may have, as what you stated at the top of the show, a life review to which uh, portions of their life or in the entirety of their lives is reviewed and they're given uh, you know pictures of it to determine if they have made good decisions or bad decisions or not uh, many of them come back from a near-death experience after being resuscitated from clinical death completely changed some people become more spiritual some people become more religious less spiritual some people say they come back with after effects. They become much more empathetic. Uh, they lack the fear of death. They may pick up some precognition, etc. Nonetheless, uh, near-death experiencers typically are never the same again. But uh, to now answer your question, I've just been continuing with my interviews of various guests uh, concerning their near-death experiences. 
Excellent. Awesome. Awesomeness. Now, um, this is something that's really, you know, ties to me because I have severe depression and it's a, like a daily flight, but uh, I come through it. But have you ever had any guests that had uh, suicide and then came back? Yes, I did. I've had a couple of guests who appeared on Real Spiritual Talk Radio, which I'm trying to kind of change that a little bit because we're in the podcast phase in this era of time. It really isn't radio anymore where you just turn on the knob and hear music coming out of a box. But nonetheless, yeah. yes, I've had guests come on who have been suicidal and who have committed suicide, and they have come back to tell the story. Uh, one particular guest, who I, I interviewed, I believe, after I interviewed on your show, talked about how she mistakenly took a an entire bottle of either sleeping pill or some sort of aspirin, and she was completely out of her body. She talked about experiencing this realm where all the answers to her questions were answered before she could even ask it which is another typical characteristic of near-death experiencers. They typically say that they have the knowledge of the entire world and everything else outside of it. They're blended. They're one with it. And she talked about just having all of this knowledge that she just could never have attained uh, in her earthly life. And in fact, when she came back from this near-death experience, a lot of that information that she was given, like how the world began, uh, the nature of God, all these philosophical questions that we ask ourselves. She was able to recall these things while she was there, but was not able to bring that information back with her. It's almost as if there's a veil that's purposely put over us in this earthly realm to which we're not supposed to know. You know what I mean? There's a mystery yeah. to everything. Oh, wow. That, 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 that is one amazing thing. This is why... I love hearing that experience, especially way back in uh, coast to coast AM times. And I was always hoping that there was always talk about NDs before I started watching YouTube. And uh, but nonetheless, um, now have you ever had any ND guests who uh, survived either an accident or even a plane crash before? I've had many uh, near-death experiencers who've gotten to accidents. In fact, my very recent guest. Uh, survived a really, really bad car crash in 1965. She was a cadet uh, at the Air Force, and her and another cadet were driving, and there was alcohol involved, and uh, they ended up either hitting a tree or hitting a pole, um, one of the two, but the car was a massive wreck. In fact, she wrote a book about her near-death experience, and there was a picture of the wreck in there uh, to which she was able to show my viewers. In addition to the picture in her book, there was also a newspaper article written about the crash back in 1965, which also had a, a, a picture of the, the, the wreck, the wrecked state that this car was in. And uh, she pretty much died on the scene. Uh, they, the people who had surrounded her took a blanket and covered her with it because, you know, typically when someone dies or someone's dead in a, in a wreck, that's what they do. They cover you right up and wait for the ambulance, and then they would bring you uh, on board to the hospital into the morgue. Uh, in her case, uh, while she was out, she had a near-death experience. Now, this was an interesting case of a near-death experience because... During the time of the wreck, uh, and, and com- immediately after the wreck, she did not remember neither the wreck nor the near-death experience, but 19 years later, she said she was walking out of a Starbucks and got into a car, I guess, you know, that can recall, uh, a, you know, a past image of you being in a car, and that's when everything started floating back to her. She talked about also being in an, uh, an unearthly realm an otherworldly place where she too had the knowledge of everything. There was this bright light that emanated everything. And um, interestingly enough, she was always taught a very strict version of Christianity. Uh, She attended Mm -hmm. a Baptist church. She attended a Lutheran church. But she said in her near-death experience, God wasn't this mean individual uh, as he appeared to be in some of the teachings that she received from her pastors and religious authorities. Instead, she talked about this 
kind, loving, ultimately, ultimate merciful entity who only wanted her to come back and also spread the same love that she received while she was there uh, during her near-death experience. So that's another thing that near-death experiencers also come back with. They, as I stated in the introduction, either come back more religious and more spiritual, or they come back non-religious at all. They end up turning their backs on their childhood religions because what they experience there just doesn't jive or just doesn't, doesn't match or mix well with what they were taught as children. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, I, I have been reading these stories before our interview, and I thought that you were the perfect person to talk about this because uh, I read a couple of stories about a couple of uh, funeral home incidents where a person dies and then all of a sudden started breathing and they had to take, a, take them back to the hospital. And uh, it was like a couple of, one this month and another one last month. Uh, I forgot what story what it was, but yeah, they, they found a person wind up breathing after they had been pronounced dead. Have you read those stories or come across that? Yes, I'm very familiar with that story. And um, prior to that, remember, we had a football player who also had a cardiac arrest on the field uh, yeah. who had to be taken out. And, and in fact, they said that he had, I think, multiple cardiac arrests where he was out. Oh, my God. Yeah, for uh, uh, an interval of time. We, we haven't interviewed those people, so we can't determine what they experienced if they experienced anything, but you bring up a good point there. And I want to state this in connection with the last person I interviewed concerning the, the, the woman in 1965 who had the car crash. Many people do have clinical death moments. They may have a cardiac arrest. They may have a heart attack and they may be resuscitated several minutes later. Very often, just as well as people have near death experiences, people say that they really didn't experience anything. It was just like the lights had turned out on them, and then after they were resuscitated, the lights just came back, and they came back into wow. this life. So there are many people. In fact, research, research of maybe 100 cardiac arrest patients would show only a smaller percentage of those cardiac arrest patients who were resuscitated actually had near-death experiences. So the question in the near-death experience community has been, why do some people have near-death experiences and others don't, even though the main ingredient of clinical death is there? One thing I tried to um, theorize when I was interviewing uh, this particular individual was perhaps like her who did not recall her near-death experience until years later, perhaps there is some sort of uh, memory block of the situation. Perhaps yeah. uh, the, in, the situation is repressed for some reason, and her theory was that she believed that when the body is ready and totally healed, not only from the physical pain but from the emotional pain, uh, then the experience can come back to them. I mean, we don't know either way, but certainly there have been near-death experiences where people died more than one time. They had clinical death uh, situations more than one time. The first time they saw nothing. The second time they did have a near-death experience. There's also been cases where people had near-death experiences and like her had a delayed recollection of it, you know, did not remember it until later on. So perhaps we can explain these people who do not have near-death experiences or seem to not have near-death experiences with a repression or uh, some sort of delayed recollection that hasn't happened yet that may happen at some time in the future. Or it could just be the soul just is just not leaving the body for whatever reason. Uh, the main reason would be it already knows the person is it's not the person's time and so they're going to uh, resurrect from this and that they don't need to see this otherworldly place whereas other people need to that's that's more research that has to be done but concerning the people that you talked about yes I did read those articles we don't know what they saw because no one has interviewed them concerning what they saw uh, I don't have any more information on those people other than the fact that they were resuscitated from the state that they were in perhaps they did see something perhaps they didn't and, and or perhaps they will recall it at a later time. Yeah, yeah. 
Now, I did have another question. You might have uh, guessed that. Uh, there uh, Now, according to the Bible, there will be two judgments. One is the judgment seat of Christ, where a believer will go to to be judged. And there is the great white throne judgment, where, well, it's said to be non, non-believers, but also maybe believers that, uh, find, uh, that ultimately rejected Christ will go. Have you had any guests that had, uh, and deeds about either the great white throne judgment or the uh, or the judgment seat of Christ. So I think we have to be very very careful when we're uh, quoting the Bible because remember yeah. the Bible has been translated in multiple languages. There are multiple denominations who claim Christianity, and therefore because of that, there are multiple interpretations of the Bible. Uh, oh wow. People People can interpret judgment. They can they can interpret believers versus non-believers, and believers going to paradise and heaven, and non-believers uh, going to hell. At the same time, there are people who can interpret the Bible using the very same scripture that says there's no such thing as non-believers going to hell. Jesus died for everyone. Now oh. I would I would talk about this uh, with you from a near-death experience perspective. I okay. have interviewed. Atheists. I have interviewed people who are agnostic. Um, I've had I've interviewed people of other religions other than Christianity. And one similarity that all of them seem to have is that when they had their positive near death experiences, they came into the same light, they came into the same joy, they came into the same love of God as anyone else. In fact, I interviewed a, a young man. Uh, two years ago, who had a near-death experience after a suicide attempt. And one of the things he said he was shown by God directly in his near-death experience were images of different people who represent different philosophies, different cultures, different walks of life. He said, I was shown a businessman going to work. He said, I was shown a kid on a skateboard. He said, I was shown a prostitute. And he said, between those three people who have different walks of life, different philosophies, perhaps different belief systems in God, God still said, I see no difference between any of those three. I absolutely love all of them. So it seems to me that what unites many of these positive near-death experiences is this overall love for humanity, overall love for mankind, this overall love for all things that exist, that breathe, right, that are living. Um, And another thing that seems to be very similar amongst all these positive near-death experiences is that very often they're told to come back to earth and provide the same love to others as they receive there. So that would transcend if we if everyone came back from their near death experience and just started loving everyone despite their religious belief systems uh political belief systems etc you know it would it, it would it matter what your belief system is because the key thing would be to love one another so yeah. when we go back to scripture just know that there are various interpretations of scripture and not one person has had god come down to them and say you're right and the guy across the street from you is wrong, and vice versa. Wow. Yeah, because it is true. I mean, it, it happened uh, uh, religious leaders that always try to scare us every now and then. And so, I mean, it takes people like you and people at the NDE community. That's why I love hearing stories about because I get both sides of every story. That's why I love about it. And just to add to what I was saying, ironically, there have been Christians who've had near-death experiences, people who have identified as Christian, whether Catholic or Protestant, who have had hellish near-death experiences. Mm -hmm. So if the argument by uh, many right-wing conservative clergy was that your belief system is what God is, is the only thing God cares about, then these people, by default should have went right into a heavenly uh, realm, right? They shouldn't have went into a place of darkness or into a a, a what we call a hellish realm. And we're still trying to figure out why some people have hellish realms. They are much, uh, there's a much smaller percentage of people who have hellish realms than people who have heavenly uh, experiences. 
but we're still trying to determine it. I, I've i had people on my show. I had one lady on my show who had a fiery, a literal fiery hellish experience where she couldn't oh. breathe. Everything was on fire. Every, everyone was on fire, including herself. There was no way to escape it. There was no exit out of it. Uh, she was a Christian at the time. Uh, however, one thing about her was that she was very abusive to herself, to her body. She was a avid drug user, right? She was constantly getting high. In fact, the reason why she had her near-death experience is because she overdosed. She Ooh. never learned her lesson. So perhaps these hellish near-death experiences are trying to teach us lessons. Uh, some of the researchers uh, theorize uh, as to why we have these near-death experiences. Perhaps we're going uh, on a wrong path concerning our relationships with others and concerning our relationships with ourselves because it's not enough and many near-death experiences talk about this very often it's not enough to just come back and love others you're supposed to love yourself as well you're supposed to hold yourself in high regard and, and self-esteem believe me I know there's a lot of people that may say things to us that put us down but if we can remember yeah. that we are all absolutely loved and all a part of this spiritual kingdom. In fact, this is where we originate from, uh, and that we're all here to serve a particular purpose in our lives, then uh, there's no reason why we can't love ourselves just, just the way we preach loving our neighbor. Man, that, that, this, this is totally fascinating. And you will be back again. Uh, I just uh, don't want you to know that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Three times the now, charm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So about when people struggle and then God help us uh, to struggle is there a way for people who struggle that when they get their NDE is there, there a way that there'll be more heavily experienced or do they also get health experience for those people that God protects from struggling I mean there's people that have been struggling all their life they never make it out of poverty and you know then they died and and then we don't, we don't know what happened. But what I'm trying to say is, what about people who are, have been struggling all their life? What, what kind of NDE did they have? If so you, if that's, you have that's a very, yes, that's a very good question. Uh, I've had near-death experiencers who come on, who've arrived on my show, who talked about struggle, whether it be financial. I have, I've had people living out of their cars, living on the streets. I've had people talk about emotional struggle. I've had people talk about physical uh, and mental abuse either by the hands of their parents or a loved one. And what they were shown in their near-death experiences specifically were two things. Uh, one lady spoke to me about how she was abused by her lover or her husband, and she was able in her near-death experience to see the, this huge web, this, this connection of why she was abused by her husband. She saw all of the abuse that he faced, right? And mm -hmm. because he was so abused, he had no other outlet but to abuse her. So oh, wow. one reason is, one reason is, especially if it's at the hands of someone else, you have to understand that those people were probably abused and they're just passing that abuse on to you. That's why we talk about ripple effects and how just smiling at someone, telling them they matter, telling them uh, that they do serve a purpose could actually alter uh, a lot of the trauma that they're facing because half of the times they are not told those things. They're told the opposite. Another thing uh, near-death experience talk about concerning struggle, whether it be physical, emotional, etc., is that they chose themselves to struggle. They chose oh. themselves to be poor. They chose themselves to, to suffer. They chose themselves to be abused prior to coming into the uh, physical incarnated body that they're in. Uh, the idea, uh, rather, it's more than an idea, but the consensus seems to be amongst many near-death experiencers is that prior to becoming human, we were all souls or spirits, rather, in this earthly realm who decided to come into this earthly realm. Uh, we selected a body. Uh, or, or who we want it to be, uh, we incarnated into that. But in addition to just selecting to come to earth and who we want it to be, we also selected 
struggles, right, hurdles, because what they're saying, uh, according to near-death experiencers, is that these struggles elevate us spiritually. We learn much more on a spiritual level if we can come into this earthly realm and experience it. We have now, we have now much more to go back into the spiritual realm with for people or our other souls that want to decide to come back to, to let them know we've been there, we've done that. You, you talked about Christianity earlier. You think about uh, Jesus. Many interpret Jesus to be the Son of God. They interpret him to be God in the flesh, right? And right. what happened to him? He was crucified. So the argument right. there is that if, if Jesus truly was God in the flesh and he was crucified for the sins of mankind, and faced this physical pain and all this struggle, and the idea was that he was supposed to do that for mankind. That means God himself came down into earth and felt what humans are feeling. That's exactly right. the concept of all of us, right? We're souls or spirits who come into this earthly realm to, to feel everything about it so that we can go back uh, a, a brighter, more evolved spiritual entity. Now, I will tell you something else. In addition to that, there's another, there's a third reason why we struggle here. We struggle also here because of things that we've done in past lives. Past lives mm -hmm. are another uh, concept in near-death experiences. So we have pre-life, you know, before you, you, you came into the earthly realm, and then we have past lives, dying, going back into the spiritual realm, and then coming back. What many near-death experiencers are saying is a third reason why we struggle is because we put a lot of struggle onto someone else, right? So we're paying back what's called that karmic debt. We yeah. were thieves. We were heartbreakers. We were slanderous with our words to someone, and we completely, from our human choices, of course, we completely um, brought havoc into someone else's life. So now that we've died, our mission is to come back and, and repair that to make that right, right? So the third reason is karmic debt. We're now struggling because we're holding the karma that we gave to someone else in a past life. So there's three reasons. There's the earthly choice, right? Someone did something wrong to that person and that person is throwing it to you. There's the pre-choice, right? Before you came into the world, you decided you wanted to feel poverty because you wanted to feel the opposite of the love that you were feeling in this heavenly realm. Or the third reason which is karmic debt. You went into the world, uh, you made some poor decisions, and so you came back to, to repay that through what's called karmic debt. Wow. Excellent. You know, we're going to definitely have you back because I, I, I have some further questions, you know, about, you know, uh, different things. And we're definitely going to have you back at uh, some point in time. And I want to thank you for being on the program. This is very enlightening, very enlightening. And uh, that's why I love NDEs because I've been to church goer all my life. I mean, you know that. I mean, you know, even when I was at church at uh, Tunnel Jackson's uh, home going, I mean, so, uh, I mean, it's just, it's just been rough. I mean, you know, been scared, to, you know, like a scare straight program or something like that. But when I was, when I was just brought into the ND arena, I just love, because I wonder what happens. There's an unknown factor, you know, what happens when we die. It's always an unknown. So. Yes, Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, and I'll be glad to come back. Uh, for yeah. your viewers and your listeners, they can catch me at Real Spiritual Talk Podcast on YouTube or wherever podcasts are heard, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon, etc. And by then, by the third time that I come back, of course, I would have had interviewed even more guests, so I would have even more fascinating near-death experience accounts to share with you. Good, good. I would like that. I would definitely like that. So, uh, with that, before we go, I would like to talk to not only you, but also to the viewers about LiveGood. Uh, speaking of health and wealth, uh, LiveGood is a brand new company that's breaking the mold, and it has different products, uh, especially now, the one I'm going to get is the CBD oil, uh, especially for my anxiety and I have severe depression. Uh, they also have coffee for you, uh, for your coffee lovers there. So they do have healthy coffee. They also have a product called uh, 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 Super Reds. It's almost like Super Beats. 
Then they had the green tea. I mean, they have so much. I mean, they have so much that you got to take a look into. They also have a business side if you want to make a little bit of extra money. Like you want to make a little extra money on the side, especially with the inflation that scares people to death. You know, rent's going up, everything's going up. But you can have the choice to just make the mess of money on top of, you know, your job. You can make this a side hustle. And one of the company that I'm talking about is Live Good. Live Good is the new company, and it's been going like game busters. So if you want to experience Live Good for yourself, there's a good short video that, you know, go right into it. it. Just don't go into the side stories like you hear on other business opportunity videos. Go right to the point, and I love that. So if you want to experience Live Good, go to livegoodtour.com slash Big D Country. As you see, I always try to make it easy when I, when I announce these. Livegoodtour.com slash Big D Country. Uh, Pre-enroll, then it's, uh, it's $40 to be an affiliate. Now, when I joined, it was $20 to be an affiliate, and it's for life. So I was grandfathered in when they raised the price to $40. But then there is two options to be a membership. It's ten dollars a month or ninety or nine ninety five or you know, if I like to round it up. And then if you want to pay for the year like I did, it's a hundred dollars. So but Lamont, thank you for sharing what your real real spiritual talk radio. And would you let me know when there's a change in the name pretty soon? Yes. I will definitely that will be across the board. Everyone who's tuning into the YouTube page and to the uh, podcast page, it, it will be an automatic change across the board. But I will let you know specifically as yeah. well. Please, because I want to, uh, I want to give you the proper introduction the next time I announce you again. And so, uh, for more information on the Big D Zone, go to Big D Country. I mean, it's, no, it's, <laughs> I made a long shot. Escape to Big D Country dot com. Escape to Big D Country dot com. Now I'm gonna ask my guest if he would have any closing ar- uh closing arguments. Okay. If he had any closing words and also I'm gonna let him in the podcast any way that he sees fit. So the floor is yours and you end the show. Well thank you very much, Deshaun. I wanna thank you again for having me on. I wanna thank all the listeners for tuning in. Uh, Near-death experiences are a very, very uh, important phenomenon, in my opinion, as I stated at the top of the show, because it's the, it, it represents the, the higher situations that govern these lower situations that we are a part of here in the earthly realm. And I just want to say, uh, you know, consistently, uh, near-death experiencers, when they come back from one, and I, will, and I guess I'm repeating this, but it's very important to know that how we're treating one another is a, a, a vital component of what's expected from us, seemingly from these near-death experiencers who return with the information to be good to someone, be kind to someone, be loving, be compassionate to someone. Never forget about that. And in addition to that, never forget about being good, kind, compassionate, and loving to yourself. Um, overwhelmingly near-death experiences seem to show that we are loved, absolutely loved, and that there is free will on both sides of the curtain. There's free will in coming into this earthly realm and deciding what struggles we want to participate in, deciding where we want to end up in this earthly realm, and there's also free will when we get here. You know, we can make the decision to steal from someone or give to someone. Uh, as Jesus says in the Bible, to take life or to save life. We, that, that, that power of decision is right in our hands. And Deshaun, I want to thank you very much once again for uh, allowing me to come on your show and, and put this uh, at times controversial mes- message out there. Well, anytime, and uh, we're going to do it again really soon, probably either before I move out of state or probably after when I settle in. But by the, like you said, by the time you have more guests, so, uh, otherwise, uh, you can end it the way you end your, your talk radio program, so go right ahead. Well, I usually end uh, with the name of the 
uh, guest on my show, so I guess I'll just end it with the name of the host of this show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Deshaun Porter, the Big D Zone.